Greetings, lovely humans. Today we are getting up to Regency nonsense because Bridgerton is back. However, I do not have any Regency appropriate undergarments, so today I shall be attempting to begin making, at least, some Regency short stays. So, what are stays? Stays are a historical, structural, foundational garment, which is basically a very fancy way of saying old-timey underwear. Yes, one stroke. Basically, before there were bras, there were corsets, and before there were corsets, there were stays. And during the Regency era, there were long stays, which went to a little bit above the hip line, or there were short stays, which would end around the waist or just under the bust. And one of the entertaining byproducts of being very short-waisted, like me, is that just under my bust and where my waist is, is pretty much the exact same location. A brief intro to Regency short stays. So, the pattern that I have for this was created by using the drafting instructions in Stays and Corsets by Mandy Barrington, the 1820 cotton corset. And then I took a tracing of all of the pieces from the waistline up to create my short stay pattern. So I'm not entirely sure exactly how it's going to work. Because I'm not quite sure how it's going to work, I don't want to just throw myself into the final thing with the fabric that I really like. The fabric that I want to make this from is this beauty. Really stunning multicoloured linen, but it's very nice and I'm not sure how this pattern's going to come together. So I'm going to make a sort of mock-up using this which is a relatively heavyweight cotton, and if that goes well, then this will become the lining for the outer layer made of this. So I started the making process by laying out and pinning up all of my pattern pieces on my mock-up slash lining fabric, chalking out the seam allowances around each of the pattern pieces, and then cutting all of them out. It took me a little while to figure out where I needed seam allowance on each pattern piece because the top and bottom edge of these short stays, as well as three out of four sides of the strap pieces, were going to be finished with binding. This meant that anywhere I was joining pieces of fabric together, I did need seam allowance, but on any part of any pattern piece that would become part of the top or bottom of the stays, I didn't need it. And because I figured this out after drawing in all the seam allowance on all sides of all pattern pieces, I probably wasted a little bit more of my mock-up slash lining fabric than was strictly necessary, but ultimately no harm done really. I was quite worried about aligning or attaching the bust gussets incorrectly on the front body piece, so I used a different colour of chalk to roughly shade over the top of the pattern piece so I could still see the exact curve the bottom of the bust gusset seams needed to follow. Okay, so I've only just finished cutting out and I haven't even started sewing yet and I am already concerned. Mostly because of the bust gussets. I don't really know how to put in gussets. I don't think I ever have before. I've always avoided it and I'm a bit afraid and confused, but I think I'm working out. So here we have the front piece that I cut on a fold so that it has space for a busk channel. This is panel two and this is meant to go in here, which means in here, but I need to put it but I, I've pinned one there, so I need to put it in here, which means it needs to be the other way up. So it needs to go like this and like this. However, this is the wrong side of the fabric, and this is the wrong side of the fabric, and I want the right sides together. So I think what I need to do is for it to end up in this orientation, I need to pin it on this side, I think. And so, as far as I can, without completely seaming it down the side, I've made these little, like, blush divots so I know where the bottom of the bust gussets are meant to be on this front panel. And I think I can do this. I think I can figure it out. I could be doing this completely wrong. Am I going to go and do any research or learning or uh, advice asking of any kind about inserting gussets? No, absolutely not. I'm going to see if the way that I can kind of make sense of doing this is a way of doing it, because I'm stubborn and lazy like that. But yeah, I think, I think I need to put this 
here so that further down the line I can attach this side of the gusset to the front side of this, I think. How am I going to do the bottom? Bottom's going to be tricky. Maybe I attach the bottom first. The bottom first. That makes much more sense. Okay, we'll attach their butts first and then we'll do the side pieces because that makes way more sense. Way more sense. Okay, <laughs> now I need to figure this out all over again. Be back in a minute. So I went about attaching the butts of the gussets as I had decided to call them by pinning where the chalk markings for the bottom of the gusset channel were on the wrong side of the fabric and then using what I could see of those pins on the right side of the fabric to pin the gusset pieces in the correct place. I then did a teeny tiny row of stitches along the very bottom of each gusset channel for butt securing purposes. Rotated the gusset so that the right sides of the fabric were together along one edge and pinned that in place. sewed down that edge, attempting to follow the marked curves with pretty mixed results from gusset to gusset, lined up and pinned the last edge of each gusset piece, which was, in all honesty, fiddly as hell, sewed as far as I could along that edge, and then finished off that last little gap in the seam I couldn't reach with the machine with a bit of hand stitching. I sewed the strap pieces to each of my back pieces, pinned and then sewed each of my back pieces to the newly gusseted front piece, and then I was ready to check the fit. Okay, so this came together a lot more swiftly than I expected it to, for once. To basically show you how it's fitting and how the mock-up came together, I've basically pinned some relevant places to myself because it's something I can't hold in place and there are currently no fastenings. But from what I can tell, when there is a wooden busk in the centre, binding along the top edge that will kind of help draw it together, this will hopefully lay slightly more flat against my sternum. We'll see. With the strap and the relevant piece of the stay in place, that seems to work pretty well. And then at the back, it definitely has plenty of space at the top here. Lower down, it has less give. However, I don't think that's going to pose an enormous problem because part of the reason there isn't as much space around the waist free as there is at the top of the stays is because the pattern is drafted that way. It's meant to be that shape. So I think we're all right. Overall, I'm quite happy with how this layer came together and how it's fitting. So big up stays and corsets for having clear and useful drafting instructions. I think I'm going to move on to cutting out of my actual proper fabric and hope to high heaven that it's a weight of linen that will actually work for this. We're doing the outer shell part now, I guess. This is way speedier than I thought it was going to be. This never happens. So like a real sewist, I ironed my lovely linen outer fabric. This fabric was a cheap buy off a market stall that my mum picked up eight or nine years ago that had been hiding in her stash since, and because she didn't have a plan for it, she graciously let me harvest it for my own purposes. I followed the same process I had for the lining layer of laying out, pinning up, making chalk marks, and cutting out each of the pieces for the outer layer of the short stays. Because it was harder to see the chalk marks on this fabric, and because I'd noticed my little blush chalk marks on the inner layer fading and rubbing off, I decided to be sensible and take the time to thread mark the seam lines on the gusset channels and the bust gusset pieces. And because the linen fabric was a looser weave that was a lot more delicate and more prone to fraying, I thought it would be easier, less stressful, and would look much better if I put the bust gussets in by hand. So I folded under the seam allowance of the gusset channels, lined them up with the seam lines I'd thread marked on the bust gussets, pinned them in place, and then got to stitching. I just used a basic half back stitch for the entire seam on each gusset, adding a full back stitch at regular intervals just to keep everything strong and secure. And doing all of this hand stitching took quite a long time. I always seem to forget how much longer hand stitching takes, although I ended up being pretty unwell while working on this project, so it was kind of a relief to both have something to focus on to keep me busy while I was unwell, and that what I was doing could be done under a blanket on the sofa 
while watching comfort films. After all the gussets were inserted, I pinned my back pieces that I'd already attached straps to onto the front piece and sewed both of my side seams. Okay, we are back and I'd just gotten to the point of pinning the back edges of the lining and the outer shell to each other. One of these things is not like the other and that means one of them's wrong is the outer shell. The outer shell is wrong. I put the straps on the wrong way round, or rather I put the wrong strap on the wrong back panel. So now I need to unpick those seams and redo them, which is fine. As I said to a friend the other day while helping them make a circle skirt, about 40% of sewing is unpicking. We're just gonna unpick those seams to do them again. Unpicking time and re-sewing time. So I unpicked the straps as carefully as I could and sewed them back on again, this time to the correct back piece. I then started preparing to attach my inner and outer layers of the stays. I used a pinwheel to transfer the marks from the pattern to the lining that I would need to do the cording. Cording was a historical method of adding structure to garments, particularly undergarments, long before the invention of things like elastic and underwires. Cording was more flexible than boning, and so was an excellent way of adding stiffness, shape and support to specific sections of stays or corsets, where that structure was needed, but where the rigidity of the available forms of boning would either be impractical or uncomfortable for whoever was wearing it. With the lining and outer shell right sides together, I sewed the two centre back seams of the stays, pressing them as neatly as possible. Then I did my best to perfectly align the inner and outer layers, pinned everything as precisely as I could, and returned to the matter of cording. So how cording actually works is by creating parallel lines of stitching quite close together to make a narrow channel. These are a little bit too far apart, but anyway, once you have your channel, you thread thick string through it, and that's cording. An individual line of cording doesn't really do much to add structure, but multiple intersecting lines made up of multiple corded channels really adds up. And across the front of these stays, there are 24 individual lines of cording divided into 12 sections laid out pretty much in the shape of modern underwires in modern bras. I will say though that cording is pretty hard to do. It takes a lot of precision, it pulls the fabric around a lot, and threading the string into the channels that were the right size was so tough that not only did doing it make my hands hurt, but actually broke the needle I'd been using. But nevertheless, I pressed on, marking out and stitching the four boning channels at the centre back of the stays, cutting the boning to size, filing the heck out of the edges, and then inserting it. I actually went back and cut another set so I could double up on the boning in each channel. It didn't have quite enough structure and that second bone in each channel seemed to really sort that out. And then it was time to consider my binding. Because these stays needed a little bit of gathering at the top of each bus gusset and the binding would need to hold that gathering in place, I needed to make straight binding, cut in line with the straight grain of the fabric, as opposed to bias binding, which is cut on the bias of the fabric and can slash will stretch. I chalked out the width I wanted, pulled a thread in the linen to make sure it was as straight as possible, cut along that line, and then used this handy little binding tape maker thing my mum got me for Christmas a few years ago to press my binding into shape. I then folded that binding over the raw edges at the bottom of the stays, pinned it all in place, and got to sewing. Again, I decided to hand sew it because I knew machine stitching it would be a nightmare, and again, it took an age longer than I expected because I forget how long it actually takes to hand sew things. But once the bottom of the stays were bound, it was time to add a busk. Now, a lot of people use rulers or similar for their busks, but I didn't have one and couldn't buy one that would be the right dimensions. So I marked and cut some thin MDF to the correct size, sanded all of its edges to make it sit nicely in the bust channel and popped it into place. I then made myself some more binding, pinned that binding along the entire top edge of the short stays, including all the strap edges, and stitched all of that into place as well. So we're back. It has been many a day, because I simultaneously had a wisdom tooth infection and the flu. Do not recommend. Zero out of ten. However, there is not much left to do on these bad boys. It's basically just eyelets and some lacing 
and then we're done, shall we? Yes, we shall. I used an awl to start off and stretch each hole for each eyelet, and then used a few strands of black embroidery thread to sew each of them by hand. And because I'd cut one of my pieces of fabric too narrow for my binding, I decided to press it using a narrower binding maker and fell the edges of it closed so the lacing of the stays would match the outside, because, well, why not, really? After that homemade ribbon was done and in place, my self-drafted Regency short stays were finally done. So there you go, the Regency short stays are done. And overall, I'm pretty happy with them. <clears throat> there are definitely some things that need adjusting. The straps are too long, it's kept like falling off my shoulders at various points. I think also for my body, the angle of the straps was wrong. And if I was gonna make Regency short stays again, I would adjust the angle where the strap meets the back. Because when I have the straps in a position where they were actually in the correct place on my shoulders to give some form of support, there was some gaping. I also think, if I was going to make them again, I would need to do something with the front of them, adding larger gussets or just raising the height slightly of the front of the stays. I did also realise after I had done the entirety of my binding and a few eyelets that I did not transfer or sew or cord any of the cording that was meant to be on the back pieces of these stays. So that's a serious goof. Despite that, they seem to work okay. And to be fair, I'm really pleased. I think it is super cool. The outside of them is beautiful. And one of the things I am absolutely thrilled about, which was not my intention when I started out because of the lining fabric and because of the way that I did the stitching and the binding, the stays are reversible. If I want to go for a more era-appropriate vibe, I suppose you could say, I could put the pale lavender fabric on the outside instead and have the very fancy digitally printed brightly coloured linen on the inside. Something else about these that makes them a bit complicated in terms of actually wearing them as a functional garment is because there is a wooden busk down the centre and because I made that wooden busk out of MDF, I can't wash these at least not by submerging the entire thing in water. Some of the plans I had for my kind of goth Bridgerton, dark Bridgerton idea might have to go onto the back burner a bit, because these took me a lot longer than I expected, thanks to many illnesses over this project. So I think I might just make my dress and then keep all of my materials for the over jacket for when the next season of Bridgerton comes out or when I next fancy doing a goth Regency look, which will probably be in about three weeks time, knowing me. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed my first foray into stay and corset making. I'm sure there will be many more to come. If you like this video, then liking it, sharing it around, commenting, all really help me out. If you wanna keep hanging out, that would be really, really cool. But whether you decide to keep hanging out or not, I hope everything is okay in your world. And I will see you all next time. Overall, I'm pretty happy with Flew them. Up. Did, stop clawing the sofa. Let me claw. The Regency short stays are done. No. What is your deal? Why? This is not scratching posts. But you won't. have many. Get, get your claws out. No claws in sofa, please. Uh. Okay, grooming time is allowed. Impossible child. Wait. What? Yes, I am speaking of you when I say impossible child. Why though? Hello. I leave now. You're gonna go. S you're gonna go burrow in the bedding. What? The cushions? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Weirdo. Mother. Hello. Greetings. Fuss me. Uh, um, we, we just talked about claws in the sofa. Oh, give up. No. That was more of an issue when I was wearing them against my skin compared to when I was wearing them like Scritch with better. a shift underneath. What are you doing? Fuss.
which isn't too surprising. At the time, they would have been worn with... Enough. Did not like. Do you want strokes or not? Why do you nip me if you want attention? It's very rude. You fussed me incorrectly. Which is not... What is? <laughs> Scritch? Oh, now you want fuss. Yes. Now you do. Oh, yes. Do you get grumpy if I'm not paying attention to you when I fuss you? Is that what it is? I won't tell. You just want my undivided attention. Do scratch what, now. What, what is happening? Are you just like ninjaing across the Do sofa? Do not touch the beans. There was some gaping. What is? Excuse me. Twig. Stop it. What is this? Twig. I hope you enjoyed my first foray into stay. Want to and... see? Hey, hey, Twig. <gasps> Why do you stop that? Get, 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 get out! You are so mean, wanker. <sighs> Why does she have to be like this? Well, anyway. Get in the place. Come on. Why do you have no chill? Graceful. Graceful and not at all irritating. Graceful.